hey welcome to my channel you are here uh, make sure that you subscribe to my channel make sure that you like this video and then also uh, drop me some comments and questions below this topic is a question that I get from almost every single client of mine and I always try to say it delicately because this is just my philosophy this doesn't mean that it's right or wrong it doesn't mean that another coaches is right or wrong this is just how I feel about it now after 15 years and the question is when do I start prep not me like autumn like as the client they're like when does my prep start and I'm kind of like it started yesterday like it starts right now like what like it's to me anymore it's not an offer on switch I've done this with myself I've cha completely changed the way that I think about these things over 15, 16 years, and I used to think of it like an off and on switch, but then the, the issue with that is I personally went from way like one end to the other, and there I missed that in between. It was just like, here I am this perfect athlete, or here I am this perfect non-athlete, I don't know. Um, it was just, it, it was too contrasted, and it wasn't good for my long-term progress. It, um... For all the hard work I would put in for prep to get ready for a show, it was undone two times faster. I could diet for six months and in less than a month, I could put all that fat back on. Um, even my, even the structure of my life, and this, this sucks. Like, I would end a show and then I would, I encouraged this in the beginning, this is my mistake. But a lot of the people around me started to to associate like, oh, Autumn's done competing. Now she can be loose. Now she can drink. Now she can eat whatever she wants. Now she can stay out late. Now she can do this. She can do that. And I'm like, that's even I wanted that. I was like, oh, my God, I can't wait till this prep is over. It was almost like a countdown, like three days until cake or like, oh, now I can stay out and party all night. It was just, it was just like, I think those extremes deprived me in a way that I felt like I had to make up for it. And that would be just this catalytic like just just worse just way worse very damaging um in a short amount of time and so like just over the years i've just completely shifted that instead of being off and on my approach now not just with myself but also with my athletes is to look at this like a spectrum because no matter what phase you're in whether it's in prep or not in prep the tools are the same and the components are the same. So you're always training for most people. There's always going to be some cardio involved and you're always on a specific structured nutrition plan. We can call it a diet, but that doesn't necessarily mean a deficit. Um, and then the supplementation is about the same. I mean, like there's not, there's no, in, there's none of those components that need to be omit or, um, present in one phase or the other that can't be used in some degree on either end of that spectrum. And so that has helped me personally just shift over. Like I, if I'm always acting and I'm always using these components, then it's not such a big deal to go from like pro progress uh, improvement season in shape to take it up a notch and say like, okay, I'm prepping now. And then a few weeks later, you're like, oh, I've been prepping for a month. And then a few weeks after that, you're like, well, you know, I look pretty close to a show. I, I think I'll plan one now. And then as you start to plan the show, things are already clicking. They're already um, congruent and they're flowing well because you didn't just flip this off and on and you didn't use a show to determine the next point, how many weeks back you need. You're just sort of always um, moving in that direction and shifting toward that direction. And then when things start to catch fire and they start to work with you, your whole life works with you. That's when I say it's time to pick a show date. Um, it's always good to have like a long-term plan, but a loose, flexible, realistic long-term plan, especially with competing. And so, um, I also use that approach now getting out of a show and you guys have seen hopefully some of my other videos about reverse dieting. Um, I try to be as candid as possible, especially now at, after these shows to show you all like my, uh, unprep also. So like with a show, I try to be open about like what's happening and what's going on leading up to the show, but then also try to show what's happening afterwards because that too is just moving back on the other end of the spectrum. So it's not off. 
I don't really know what else to call it besides off season because that's what everybody else calls it. So I like the term improvement season because as long as I'm a competitor in this lifetime, that's what it is. There is no off for the rest of my life as a competitor. It's, it's get ready for the next, even if that's far, far away. And even there's a lot of work to do. And even if it's okay that I put on some body fat, I'm still working. Um, that's part of the job. And so if this is prep, this is contest day, instead of just flipping it off and losing everything all at once um, or losing control, now I just baby step it backwards. And I do the same with my athletes. We just sort of swing back onto that other end of the spectrum. So if one end of the spectrum has, um, you know, your cardio intensity is really high or long, um, your diet is very, how do we say this, uh, specific, we'll just, say, we'll just say strict and specific for that person. Um, so if those two things are higher at this end of the spectrum, your training itself, the intensity might be slightly less, even though I still don't believe that. I still think that you can push hard and heavy even at the end. end. Uh, <laughs> so the training intensity might sacrifice a little bit. Um, your supplementation might be a little bit more regimen. I don't know. But then toward the other end, if this is like improvement season, your cardio intensity and duration might be a little bit shorter. Your diet might not be so strict. You might have some more flexible options or some laxity or freedom here. And then your training intensity might be super high or, or at least you want to be aiming for it. You feel more fueled. Um, supplementation probably is about the same or maybe you take a break on whatever whatever supplements you're using so again they're both the same component it's just like you can just slide this over so inching away from prep you might just kind of reduce your cardio length or intensity or then you might just increase your carbs or calories or fats or whatever just a little bit more you might open up some more options that might not actually change your macros for a long time you might just substitute in some different foods that you wouldn't normally have during prep for whatever reason. Um, your energy is probably going to replenish a little bit. Your metabolism will pick back up differently as you increase your training intensity. So like when you fall middle ground, my personal goal is to stay right here in between shows. I don't really like swinging back all the way into improvement season. I know it's important, uh, but I don't want to lose control. And I always want to kind of stay lean enough to where I can see where I'm gaining, um, but also have enough fuel for my body to gain. Um, so that just, in terms of when to pick a show, that's my philosophy is using this spectrum, not just like I'm on or I'm off. Not just for physical reasons, um, but yeah, just psychological reasons, emotional reason, reasons, um, the way that you balance your life. So part of my practice now is being a pro athlete, how do I keep my life balanced all the time? And I used to really rely on shows if I'm being honest, sometimes I would rely on shows to not deal with some shit. Sometimes they're just stuff that I didn't want to deal with. So I'd be like, no, I have a contest. I'll deal with it later. And I can't say that was always um, healthy or right, but I did it and I became aware of it. So now I'm like, how do I deal with this and stay focused on this and not sacrifice this to process this or take care of it or handle it or whatever. Um, and so that's just me being honest with me. Uh, so, so that ha that has something to do with it, like just the way that I would structure or or prioritize things. Um, so now I still make more efforts to get coffee with my friends. I get more efforts to handle my business matters, um, my friendship matters, my relationship matters, and my personal growth at the same time. My personal enjoyment and quality of life within a day also balance with prep. So that I'm kind of always in this middle end of their middle part of the spectrum. So I'm trying to practice this and kind of relay it over to my clients. Um, another thing to, to consider when you're going to pick a show is where is your current state? Where is your body right now? Um, not where it's going to be six months from now, not where it's going to be two weeks from now. Where is it right now? And it's not always visible. So a lot of times we think like, oh yeah, I look good right now. So I'll just go ahead and pick a show. That's great, but there are underlying things that you need to also make sure that you're just aware of and in control of, and that's not gonna work against you because these these matters can't always be seen to the eye. So I highly encourage getting your blood work done before you pick a show. Um, just making sure that everything, making sure your body is as close to homeostasis as possible because strep, strep, what? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Prep. <laughs> 
prep is stressful. It is a stress. And so it's strep throat. Uh, so, so yeah, it's a stressor to your body. So to put, to pile on more stress on an already stressed body is not a smart choice. So making sure that you don't have any underlying health issues, making sure that your hormones are in balance and, and getting a good understanding of your own body's biofeedback right now, meaning the actions that you're taking should be eliciting the response that you are asking of it. If it's not, your body isn't cooperating right now and you need it to cooperate. So if your body isn't cooperative out of prep, whatever makes you think that it's just going to cooperate in prep, I have no idea. Uh, you lost me there because I've never had an experience where like if I've got a client who they're not getting any sleep, they've got a major life event or change, good or bad, it doesn't have to be negative things, but like let's say they're moving into a new house or they just got married or whatever. Those are stressors and they're, they take a lot more energy than you think, not just your physical energy, but your mental energy. And so you have to have something in the tank. You cannot go far on a car that has this much gas in it, in the tank to begin with. So you need to fill up your tank first. Um, and I mean that in all levels, in all ways physical, emotional, mental, spiritual, whatever. Um, you have to have fuel. And that also means fueling your metabolism. So if you've had an issue where your metabolism has, metabolism has been sacrificed or slowed down or however you want to put it, just less. Let's just say, let's just say less than optimal um, for whatever your reason is. The most important thing is to restore that and encourage that. If you've talked to me in person or if you've ever heard me talk about this stuff, then I've said this a million times, it would be like, it would be like not having enough money in your bank account and you know you're gonna have to pay your taxes here in a few months and it's gonna be a big chunk of money. And if you don't save the money, now you're gonna be in trouble when you have to expend all that. <laughs> it's, it's, it's no different than a paycheck. Save your money and save your energy and save your fuel so that you can bank it and then and then when the time comes to expend it you have more than enough you have plenty um this is it this is a functioning metabolism type um game here so if you're not a, looks aside you should probably already be uh within a relatively i'll say athletic leanness before choosing a show date that's just my advice Again, no right or wrong here, and it's not one way or the other. There are lots of right ways and lots of not right ways. Um, my advice is to go ahead and prime your body physically to have a good grasp of, of resistance training. Um, be adapted, not too adapted, but like, you know, comfortable with cardio, making sure that you understand a diet or like a structured guideline. It doesn't have to be a uh, measure this or that type thing just an understanding of nutrition in general, um, making sure that you're healthy, making sure that you're in a good place and, and balancing all of these things before you pick a show. Um, another piece of advice is to make sure that your entire life is in balance. There have been a few times where, when I was younger, I felt like my body could handle a prep, but the rest of my life couldn't. Um, especially like in my twenties, I was struggling. I mean, I just, I was always working three jobs. I was in college trying to party, trying to date. It was just, there was a lot of stuff going on. Um, but I looked good. I was happy with how I looked, but I didn't have my stuff in order. My life wasn't in order. And so sometimes that meant like I had too many events going on at once. Sometimes that meant I just didn't have enough money to compete. And I'm not ashamed to say it now. I've been broke a lot. There have been a lot of times where I just can't afford it. So to go do a show and put it on my credit card and get in debt over a show is not a wise adult decision. Um, I've done it and I finally got out of it and I won't do it again. <laughs> um, so saving financially, um, making sure that you don't, for me, it was making sure that I didn't have very important life events that I couldn't replicate. Things like my friends getting married. Those are very important to me. Those types of events are very important to me. So if there was another show option that I could take, if I knew there was a very important life event that I needed to be there for someone to experience that, I would consider some other show dates if, if that choice is there. 
Um, sometimes it's the people around you. Sometimes people around you need you not to compete for just a minute, just to chill out and enjoy you as a person and have you there for them. Part of this whole thing is to be balanced in like bodybuilding is a selfish sport. So when you can, you need to repay that, I think. Uh, <laughs> so just making sure that everything is in balance. You've let your home situation, your living space, there are so many factors that could go into, but for each person, that's gonna be something completely different. This is very personal. Um, make sure you are in balance. Make sure that you've dealt with your uh, deep down internal issues. Make sure that your mind is right. Um, make sure you're in a good headspace. Just take the time to do these things well in advance. And then your game is just to try to maintain that. If you start out that way, you're gonna be a lot more stable through the whole prep. And I will tell you right now, something is going to happen in prep, it always does. But if you start off stable, you're gonna be able to hold your ground even when life throws its challenges at you at the most inconvenient times. But if you're not, it would be no different than if you were sick and then you got um, a little bit better, but not all the way. And then you got around somebody that has the flu and now you're knocked out again. It's no different. Um, making sure that you're sleeping good. So just make sure everything is in balance before you pick a show date. And then this is very important. Always give yourself extra time. Um, you don't know what's gonna happen. And I have been on the receiving end of life's beautiful blessings in disguise. Uh, <laughs> I've never regretted having an extra couple of weeks at the end of my prep. I have regretted not starting seriously in time because of things like just weird stuff happens to me. Like I almost always, not this year, not this year or last year, but all the years prior to that, I would get this really weird fever flu thing like a month out, even if it was the middle of summer. If it wasn't the flu, I would get in a car accident at like four weeks out. <laughs> it was just the weirdest thing. It's like almost starting to attract it because I was like, oh gosh, it's about the time where something's about to go wrong. And sure enough, I would get rear-ended or <laughs> whatever. Um, just little hiccups, like un unexpected expenses, um, illnesses. Hopefully you guys don't deal with that. But the worst, best case scenario is you have a few extra weeks to spare and you're over-prepared and you get to relax. Medium case scenario is you didn't give yourself quite the extra time that you needed, but it's okay because you can kind of like crank it up a notch at the end. Worst case scenario, not only are you behind, but now you're stressing about being behind and now you do get sick. And now at the very end, you're panicking because you just needed that extra pound or two off of your body and you could have used an extra week or two, but you didn't start your prep a week or two early, um, start your prep. You didn't move on that spectrum an inch sooner than later. So that's kind of why it's always a good idea to be in action. I don't care if you're a new competitor or a veteran competitor. Um, the in-between time or the before, I, I refer to it with my clients as like a pre-prep primer. And that's when we practice prep. We're not in prep. So it's okay if we like, it, it's more okay if mistakes are made, but we're practicing and we're getting the hang of it and we're getting familiar with it so that we can just transition over into prep but not have that alternate lifestyle. I used to love to go out and have my beers and stay up all night and I would, sometimes I would just completely quit the gym. That hasn't happened a lot, but sometimes it would happen to where like, I just wouldn't go to the gym for a few weeks. There are times where that's appropriate for someone. I support that. I think that's awesome when someone's like, you know what, I'm just gonna take a break and then they come back, it's fine. Um, but it's gonna take a few, a little bit more to get the gears going again. Um, so if you don't have time on your on your side as that luxury, that's probably not a good idea. If you do have time, yeah, take advantage of that. Um, take a break, go live your other lifestyle if you need it. But if you're looking at when to choose a show, um, maybe just practice getting ready for a show first and don't let this show determine you, let your body tell you when it's right. Um, if you have a coach, they should be observing these things, communicating with you and teaching you how to observe these things. If you're prepping yourself, you should have some sort of um, a good enough of awareness of how your body reacts to things to know what that point is. So again, there's no right or wrong. Like 
I don't, I personally don't coach, I don't offer eight week preps or 12 weeks preps. Everybody's prep is different. Everybody requires a different length of time. Some people need to have a, cal a caloric deficit. Some people actually need to eat more and like grow into the show and we fuel them into the show. That means that their work intensity is higher. Um, so every single person's prep is different, but those things I can say, um, make sure you're in balance and look at this as more of like a constant practice from one end of the spectrum to the other, and then give yourself extra time. Thank you for taking the time out of your day to watch my video. Uh, make sure that you hit subscribe to my channel. Make sure that you like this video if that's true and you liked it. And then leave any comments or questions or other topics that you'd like to hear me talk about below.